Our scripture this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, chapter 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Praise God for the hearing of these sacred words. Thanks be to God. All right, as we get started, let's begin with the moment of prayer. Would you pray with me? God, as that song just said, I pray that love would be born within our hearts this day. I pray that we might be present to you, even as you're always present with us, be born within us this day. And I do ask that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts. You would work in such a way that they would be made acceptable in your sight. I ask this in the name of Christ, who is our rock and redeemer. Amen. So technically, technically, it's still Christmas, at least according to the church calendar, it's still Christmas. As Julianne mentioned earlier in the service, we are in the 12 days of Christmas right now, but the problem, of course, is it doesn't really feel like Christmas anymore. If you're like me, you're already thinking about taking down your decorations already making plans to put up the tree. I'm starting to think about the goals for the next upcoming year. What are my resolutions I'm going to fail at this year? What are they going to be? And even part of us might be entering that kind of post-Christmas blues that happens uh, from time to time within our hearts. If this sounds anywhere remotely like you, a thing that's been helpful to me has been to remember why Jesus was born in the first place. I mean, this even sounds remotely like you. I think it's important for us to remember why was he sent in the first place? And truth be told, I don't think he was sent just so that when we die, we go to heaven. Although I believe that's part of it. Don't get me wrong. I think part of the reason that Jesus was sent into this world so that we might have hope of life eternal in heaven, but I don't think that's the only reason he was sent. I think Jesus was sent into this world so that we might live fully, freely, abundantly. Take our passage, for example, from Galatians chapter four. This is the closest thing that we get to a nativity story from the apostle Paul. Closest thing. This is the only moment he really mentions anything remotely near Jesus's birth. Of course, there's no shepherds in that passage we just heard. There's no inn in that passage we just heard. There's no angels, no mention of, of Joseph. We don't even get Mary's name. Jesus is just born of a woman, according to Paul. We don't really know much more than that. But what he does give us is this, a verse. When the time has come, when the time was fulfilled, God sent his son to those people born under the law in order that they might be redeemed and receive adoption as God's children. Now, to understand that passage, Paul's nativity, It's important to understand that in the the Roman world, in Paul's context, a person became an adult and it was a very clearly defined moment within their life when they did. Coming of age was very clearly defined in the ancient world. For example, in Paul, he was a Jewish person. So when you became 12, that's when you became an adult, taken away to the synagogue, adult you become, here you go. Or in Greece, it was around the age 18. Or in the Roman world, it was between 14 and 17 but it was clearly defined. Before that point in which you became an adult, you were under the control and the property of your parents or a designated trustee over your life. You were not in control. You basically had the same rights as a slave. But the moment you came of age, you were free. And people long for that moment. They long for that time of freedom. This is the backdrop of the passage you just heard. When the time had come, or another translation could be, when the world finally came of age, 
God sent God's son into the world, underneath all the religious and cultural expectations and invited us to listen to a different voice and to live from a different place from our hearts that cry out, Abba, Father. Now, I know much has changed since the days of Paul. I'm reminded that week after week, much has changed since the Bible was written. But we do long to be set free still. We have our own baggage still. From the earliest of times, we are absorbing the expectations and assumptions and lessons of our families and our culture and our friends. And that, if we're not careful, that begins to accumulate in such a way that it becomes exhausting its own form of pain and trauma, we become fatigued by its weight. And in the midst of all this stuff that happens, all these expectations and pain that we've accumulated over the years, here's the thing. Christ wants to enter in below that radar and invite us to live from a different place and listen to a different voice. Christ invites us to live with soul. Now, when I use that word soul, that's another one of those religious words has all kinds of baggage. I want to be clear here. When I use the word soul, I'm not talking about that part of us that may or may not exist after death. I'm not talking about that kind of soul. But what I am talking about is the core. Who we are at our deepest level. Our soul encompasses our minds, our our hearts, our bodies, our our deepest wishes and desires for our lives, our soul, that, that place that really exhibits who we are at our deepest level. What Jesus invites us to do is live from that place because it's at that place that our lives intersects with the very life of God. A quote and a story comes to mind. Maybe this will help. The quote is this. It comes from Frederick Buechner. Oh, he's a wonderful author. If you ever want to pick up a great devotional at the beginning of a, a new year, pick up Frederick Buechner. You can email me or call me. I can give you a couple of examples of what to, what to buy from him. But anyway, here's the quote from Frederick Buechner. And I think it has a lot to do with what I'm talking about when I talk about soul here. He notes that if he could summarize all of his teaching, it would be this. If you want to hear God speak, then listen to your life. For all moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. If you want to hear God speak, then listen to your life. Not the lives and expectations of all those people around you, me. Not the religious baggage, the cultural baggage that we've been accumulating our entire lives. But if you really want to hear the voice of the Spirit, then listen to your life, your soul. Ironically, a story now. It was a few months ago, I can't really remember exactly when, I was in the office, front office, and I was having lunch with some staff. We got on a light topic, end of the world, apocalypse, happens. That just happens when I'm around. Things like that happen when I'm around. And so we were talking about the apocalypse. I didn't remember what it was. We got a CD in the mail of someone that told us that the end of the world was coming. And so we were talking about that CD. And so in the midst of that CD, the apocalypse and lunch, we were talking. And they said, Andy, what do you think about the end of the world? And before I even got a chance to answer, they clarified what they were looking for. They said, don't give us some quote from some author that we never heard of and we don't understand. (laughs) Tell us what you really think. They were interested in my soul. I have to warn you about one thing when it comes to soul, though. Listening to your soul can get you in trouble. It'll take you to places that are against the grain of culture and the world around us. Listening to our souls comes at a price. But here's the thing. 
it's more costly not to listen to your soul than to listen. Because when we don't listen to our souls, if we're not careful, we lose our spark, our enthusiasm for life. Here's some soul questions for you as we think about the new year. Things to think about when we think about listening to our lives in order to hear God speak. First question, here we go. What direction do you want to take in the upcoming year? The wording is very important here. Notice I didn't say what goal do you want to put upon yourself. A goal is I want to lose five pounds. A direction is I want to be healthy. So what direction do you want to take in the upcoming year? And the real reason why I use that phrase direction is because when I think about Paul in Galatians next chapter, our, our passage was in chapter four, next chapter, he talks about the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. These aren't goals. These are directions that we take with us throughout our lives. They give us sort of pattern for living. So what direction do you want to take in the upcoming year? The soul longs for direction. It's eternal. These things go on and on and on. And so when we're talking about soul, we're talking about directions, not goals. That's the first question. Second question Why do you want to do it in the first place? Is your direction more about getting or giving? Because when it becomes about getting, our souls wither away. We become self-centered, focused on ourselves, and we can see it all around the world. We can see it in our own lives. When we become about getting, we wither away. But when it becomes about giving, our souls come alive. So why do you want to do it? Is it about getting or giving? Next question, okay. What actions do you want to take to make it happen? All right, here we go. What's the steps you're going to take? And final question, as you take those steps, is it working? How is it with your soul? These questions are not easy questions, but they're important ones if we're going to live into the spark that God has given us. I'll end with the story, as I always do. This comes from a book called Messy Spirituality. It's a fantastic read. I read it when I was a senior in college, written by a guy by the name of Mike Iaconelli. This book gave me permission. If I look back at my life, this was one of the first books I read that gave me permission to be me. And so Mike Iaconelli wrote a book called Messy Spirituality. God's Grace for Imperfect People was the subtext. And I'm like, I'm in, that's me. He tells a story though of being called to go see a parishioner on Christmas. This parishioner had cancer, they were dying and they wanted communion one last time before they slipped into eternity. And so he went. It was so pre-2020 when he entered the house. The whole place was packed full of people. And he served the family communion. They all gathered in a circle and they served each other communion. And then he said, let us pray. At which point before he could start, a little girl raised her hand and says, I got a question. Pastor Mike, I've got a question. When you pray, do you hear God speak? Almost dismissively, Pastor Mike says, oh yes, yes. If you close your eyes and you're really quiet, you really listen, then you can hear God speak. Translation. He's coming up with a way to get her quiet so he can pray and go home. (laughs) Take it from a pastor. We've done this before. But here's the thing. She believed him. She closed her eyes with everything she had. She listened with every fabric in her being, and they prayed. And after they said their amen and they were almost done, the little girl with enchantment in her eyes looked up at the rest of the family, and she said, I heard God. I heard God speak. Oh, the adults in the room said, what did God say to you? The little girl says, don't forget about me. If I was going to pray for us in 2021, it would be something like what that little girl had to say. And now to be clear, when I say don't forget about God, I'm not saying 
let's just add on some more religious expectations. Let's just add on something else we have to do or believe. But it would be really, don't forget about God in that we listen to our souls. We tap into the fountain of life. And we have the courage to say yes to what we hear. This much I know, in the moments I have done that, it's not easy. But it is in those moments that I'm alive, really alive. And that's the type of life I hope for us. Amen. And amen.